Good morning, Falcons. So today I'm going to go over the other part of distributive property. So when we looked at it last week, we started by seeing a factor being multiplied times a sum. Now here we have a sum and we're going to want to pull out that common factor. So looking at this 80 plus 16, we know that we could just add these together and we should get an answer of 96. Um, however, that's not very helpful when we're trying to break it up and pull, pull out their common factor. So to look at these two numbers, we need to see what factor do they have in common. Now we can pull out any factor and multiply it times the sum of the remaining factors, um, but generally we want to look for the greatest factor. So I could look at these and say, well, they're both even, I can pull out a two, um, but that's going to leave me potentially with other common factors. So uh, I guess first, if I was to draw this as an area model, what it would look like is I would have something like this where I have 80 and 16. So my common factor is gonna be what goes over here, whatever I can pull out of both of these numbers and then the remaining factor that I need to multiply that number of times to get each of these numbers. So it might be helpful for us to sit here and make, um, list out all of our factor pairs. So we would have one times 80, two times 40, let's see, three is not a factor, four times 20, five times, we know that five goes into it because it ends in a zero, a zero or five has a factor of five. So if you don't know this, you might need to do some long division, um, but I'll tell you that it's five times 16. So there's my factor pairs. So we could keep going. Um, six is not a factor, so it's not a factor. It would be eight times 10, and then we would get to 10 times eight. That's where we flip. That's where we know we found them all. So we could do the same for 16. We have 16. That would be one times 16 two times eight, four times four, and then they already flip right there. So then we know we're good, we're good, we're done. So looking at these, what factors do they have in common? Well, they both have one that's not very helpful. They both have two, so we could take that out. Uh, they both have four, they both have eight, and they both have 16. So we're gonna wanna use that greatest factor of 16. So if I take out a factor of 16 here, I'm gonna take out 16, and 16 times what is going to give me 80? Well, that's where I look right here. 16 times five gives me 80. And then 16 times what up here is going to give me 16? Well, 16 times one. So when I rewrite this, my I'm gonna rewrite it as a factor. So 16 is their common factor times the sum of the other two factors. So that would be five plus one. And then that's how I would rewrite it using distributive property. To make sure that we got this correct, we can now solve this expression using order of operations. So to do that, we would say, well, five plus one gives me six, multiply that times 16, and we should be able to do this in our head. 10 times six is 60, six times six is 36, 60 plus 36 gives us 96, which is the same answer we would have gotten up here, 96. So we're good. So this is our answer that we were looking for right here. 16 times five plus one. Now, if you pulled out a different factor, say we, we looked at it and we said, we know that these are both even. So I wanted to pull out a factor of two and say, well, two times what gives me 80. So two times 40 is 80 plus two times what is 16, two times eight. This is still, that works. That's still another option. Um, we could also pull out their common factor of four and say, well, four times 20 gives me 80 plus four times four gives me 16. We could also pull out their common factor of eight. Eight times 10 gives me 80 plus eight times two gives me 16. So all of these will give us the same answer of 96. Uh, so let's go on to another example. If I had 55 plus 75, um, let's get a new piece of paper. So 55 plus 75. Okay, so again, if I were to draw an area model, it would look something like this, where I have 55 and 75. And if I'm adding those together, just to make sure we have an idea of where our answer should be, 50 plus 70 gives me 120, five plus five is 10, so our answer should be 130. 
And then now I need to figure out what is a common factor that I can pull out of both of these. Well, just looking at these two numbers, we should right away see that they have a common factor of five. We know any two numbers have a common factor of one, but again, that's not very helpful. However, sometimes that might be their greatest common factor. So since these are pretty big numbers, again, let's go ahead and make those, list out those factor pairs. Um, if you had numbers like 12 and eight, and you could easily tell what their greatest common factor is, you don't necessarily need to write out all the factor pairs. So if we're talking about 55, we have one times 55, two is not a factor, three is not a factor, four is not a factor, five times 11, six is not a factor, seven is not a factor, eight is not a factor, nine is not a factor, 10 is not a factor, so then we get 11 times five, and that's where we flip, so we know we're done. 75, we should have one times 75, two is not a factor because it's odd, three times 25, four is not a factor, five is because it's got a factor of five and that should be five times 15. Six is not a factor, seven's not a factor, eight is not a factor, nine, no, 10, no, 11, no, 12, no. So I think that might be it. So when we're looking at this, we see their greatest factor is five. Their greatest common factor is five. Since we know that 11 is not gonna be a common factor, um, we don't necessarily need to keep going because we know that 55 is not going to be a factor of 75. So we can pull out that common factor of five. Five times what gives me 55? That's gonna be five times 11. And then five times what gives me 75? That's gonna be five times 15. So we would have five times 11 plus 15. So we can also do this when we have, um, when we have variables in our expression as well. So I'm gonna move this up. And if we're starting with the expression five times x plus 25, we can still write this out using the distributive property. Remember that when we have a number next to a variable, we talked about this in pretty good length before we left for spring break at school, but when we have a number next to a variable, it always means multiplication. So five x, we is the same as saying five times x. So I'm hitting my stand over here, which is the same because it's multiplication is repeated addition. That's like saying x plus x plus x plus x plus x. So we're adding x up five times. So we talked about that in pretty good length before we left for school, but keep that kind of in the back of your head as a reminder if that's something that we forgot. So if this is the expression that we're looking at, my area model would look something like this. I have five times X, and we don't really know how big X is, so we don't know how big that piece of our area model needs to be, that's okay. And then 25 goes here. So we need to figure out what is the common factor in these two expressions. Well, this is saying five times X, so I can take five away, or I can divide it by five. Five is a factor because it's being multiplied, X times five. And then we know that five goes into 25, and, and we can break this up because it would look like this, five times X and this 25 would look like five times five. So if I take out that factor of five, then what's left over? Well, here I just have X and here I just have another five. So that would be the same as saying five times X plus five. And then we can test out and see, is this true? Did we do it correctly for any value of X? So if I said X is three, we can test it out in our original expression. So we would just take our X and change it to a three. So we'd have five times three plus 25. Five times three is 15 plus 25. 15 plus 25 gives me 40. Now we can check that over here. So if I have five times and I'm changing my X to a three, because here we're saying X equals three, then I'd have three plus five. Three plus five is eight times five gives me 40. So if we did this correctly, if we correctly use the distributive property from here to here, then our answers should be equal for any value of X. If I said X is 500, then our answer should be equal. If I said that X is zero, our answer should be equal for any number, even for a fraction or a decimal for any value of X these two expressions need to be equal. So let's do another example um, with 
variables just to make sure you're solid on those before I give you some practice problems on it. So if I did one here, we'll do one with subtraction. So if I have 10 times X minus 30, 10 times X minus 30. So to draw that area model, the whole area is going to be represented by 10 times X. And then we're going to be taking away a section of 30. But we're still needing to find a common factor between these two, these two numbers, these two expressions. So this, remember, is 10 times X. So we know that 10 is a factor. We could also say that this could be 2 times 5 times X. So we could plot a factor of 2 or 5 as well. So looking at 30, what are some factors that 30 and 10 have in common? Well, we know that 10 goes into 30, so we could say that this would be the same as 10 times 3, and we can pull out that factor of 10. So we would say this is 10 times x, because that's what's left over here, and then 3, because that's what's left over here. Remember that this is subtraction, because I'm taking away this 30 section. So we would have 10 times x minus 3. If instead I had um, taken out a different factor, so maybe I looked at this and I said, well, I know that 5 times 6 gives me 30. So instead we remove the factor of 5, that would be okay too. If I said that that would be 5 over here, so I would have 5 times, and then we have to look at, well, what's left over? So here I have 2 times x, so that would be 2 times x minus, because we're still taking this section away, minus 6. And these are equal. Those, no matter, for any value of x, these two expressions, along with this first one, should always come up with the same answer. So let's test it out. So let's say, um, let's say that x equals 7. So starting with our original expression, we have 10 times x minus 30. But if x is 7, we're going to replace that x with 7. So we would have 10 times 7 minus 30. Order of operations says multiply first. So that's 70 minus 30 gives us an answer of 40. So now let's check this next one. We have 10 times x minus 3 but we know that x is seven, so that would be 10 times seven minus three. Order of operations says parentheses first. So I have 10 times four, which also gives me 40. And if we wanted to double check this last one too, we can. So we have five times two x, or two times x minus six, I and mean, that's multiplication. So when I say that x is seven, this doesn't turn into 27, it turns into two times seven. So we'd have five times two times seven minus six. Order of operations says parentheses first, and inside the parentheses, I have multiplication and subtraction. Order of operations says multiply first. So that would be five times 14 minus six. 14 minus six gives me eight. So it would be five times eight, which still equals 40. So that's just when x is seven we can see that they're all 40. But if you had chosen a different value to test, we should still get the same value for all of them. So I'm going to give you another quizzes of just 10 questions to practice rewriting a sum or a difference of two numbers using the distributive property. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. I'm glad to help because I know that this is something that takes kind of immediate feedback. And if you've got questions on it, you need those answered right away. So let me know if you have questions, let me know how it's going. And um, I hope to see you guys soon.